yeah you have the you have a few racing games and usually they follow the same formula of how to do things or they're really tied to a franchise i such as the f-zero game which uh, we're actually gonna be looking at today just because i need to crib information off of it but this is a proof of concept how do you make a game at the end of the day about vehicular combat and make it fun make it interesting and most importantly give it enough meat for it to feel good i think that's going to be the hardest part of this entire thing is making a game that feels good to play because we would all like to believe that oh playing a racing game is really fun and exciting the problem is racing in and of itself if you were to pitch racing to someone who has never understood racing it's not exactly the most interesting sport in the world because you because take a explain nascar to someone a bunch of guys turn left every a bunch of guys turn left at very high speeds that is effectively what racing is at the end of the day however so you need you, however people find that exciting because it's the the people involved it's the situations it's the all the exterior stuff the race itself isn't really the point the point is about what happens on there even something like uh death race 2000 i actually watched that the other night that movie isn't about the race the race is a setup for all the characters and how they interact with one another and even they kind of acknowledge it in the movie of people don't come to don't don't watch the race for the race they watch it for the scoring and the you know hitting people with fucking cars and gratuitous amounts of violence that's what they came for that's what they want and yet and yet we find something interesting and, and you know yeah we find a, an interesting cast of characters we find an interesting set of work we find an interesting world that this is taking place in which also brings me to my second point what this game is i want to make a game that has that is simple fast and violent yes that's it violent and that is surprisingly going to be a lot harder than i think these kind of games can really add you can add in a bunch of different parts to games like this a billion different parts every single one of them is going to be oh i want this i want this i want this but i don't want to do that and challenge myself to do two things this time one, I want to make a game, I want this game to be fully playable, fully, in 20 pages. Now, this may seem not like, a, well, actually not really 20 pages, I have to put on how I space things out, but overall, I want this game to not be long. I don't want this page to be a 60, 70 page game. It may seem a little bit odd, but I don't want to, I want to try to see if I can't pare things down to its bare minimums and still have a functional game. What I want to do is see, pretty much push myself to create something interesting and weird. I want to create a violent game. I want to create a game that has speed at the core concept of it. And speed, and I want speed to be both part of the game itself as well as the what you're doing. You're going fast, I want all the roles to be fast. I want all the character creation to feel fast. I want everything to have that sense of urgency and speed to it. And but I still want it to play well. That's the that's gonna be the hard part there. Light game, really light games tend to have that problem. It's like you can either make things fast or you can make things nice and like nice and playable, have that crunch, have that bite to it that really makes a game a game. So that'll be my challenge to myself. And will I succeed? Maybe not. Who knows? So maybe I'll write a 300 page epic because I have crippling problems when it comes to over design. Oh, golly gee willikers. That's, that's not how my back is supposed to go. But we will see. So where are we roughly speaking? Absolutely nowhere. We have nothing. And... So, overall, 
one, I was going to use the road redemption setting, which, uh, which is to say there isn't really a setting. Road redemption setting can roughly be described as there is a place, there are people in it, and they ride bikes aggressively. That's really all. There's things like, oh, there's technology, there's the war, there was, you know, there's energy shield and... But they're still like, I'm going to pull out my AK and shoot a man with an energy shield to death. Ha ha ha. Or, hey, I'm going to bring out my tire iron and just beat someone to death with it because I am a psychopath. And I think that could be some, some interesting pieces of story and lore and the fact that there is no setting, but there is also kind of this weird definition of one gives me enough leeway to make my own stuff in it, but also have enough to fall back on. So that that should be interesting in its own way. I'm hoping I'm hoping that works. And oh god, didn't mean to click that button. Alright, so let's see. What do I have what else am I looking for? So one of the other key things we're going to have to do is we're gonna have to split pilot and vehicle. Uh, well we'll say Call it rider and the bike. We're gonna have to split these two up. These are distinct entities. Your rider is yours. Your bike is yours. However, you may not always ride your bike. You may and your bike may not always be ri and you may not always ride and be riding your bike. Someone else can be riding your bike. You might be riding someone else's bike. They're two very different characters, but I want them both to feel like that. It's not just any bike, it's your bike. This is my beautiful crotch rocket that I care deeply about and I will do everything to protect it. Or this is my vehicle, this is my thing, this is my baby, this is my child. And if you destroy it, I will beat your legs in for in the afterlife. Now, what else are we looking for? So we're looking for, actually, so... What the... What the gibbity gobbity do you? So we're also probably going to be looking for... Eh, it's you know, quite a light, light system. You don't want something heavy. That's going to be the hard part. It's... Am I saying pick up and play? Not quite. But I want it to be in the similar vein of that. Very easy to grab, very easy to make. So let's see. So we want a light system, rider bike distinct entities. Possibly, uh, what I can put in. We're gonna pro we're gonna need track creation. Actually, what we could probably do is just put in the GM section. A very rare occurrence in my games. I actually don't like putting in GM sections because of my philosophy on them. But like a GM section of like, hey, this is how you make tracks. This is how you design enemies. This is how you do things. So, let's see. I actually did a, look, a little bit of looking around. I know what I'm going to call this setting. It's going to be called Astralis. For one distinct reason. Uh, the main character's boss, the jackal, whose name is Jackal Boss, uh, or Jackal Leader, has an Australian accent. So I'm like, it's probably a... Uh, you know, definitely not Australian uh, Mad Max setting, so why not? Let's go to Australis. And we're actually going to break that further down. To Eastia and Westia. Actually, we can do... Yeah, the Eastian Republic and the Westian Free State. And 
have from there. See. The poor and scrappy. Rich and haughty, poor and scrappy. And we can also do something where we have Phantom Territory. Jackal and Reaper Territory. And then we put in the note right here. Terrain doesn't matter. Terrain doesn't matter. Badland. Badlands and post-apocalyptic nightmare city. Apocalyptic night nightmare hellscapes. All right, all right. So yeah, this is the idea. It's there is no setting, but all I know is that you go from west to the west coast to the east coast. Now, is this New York? Is this LA to New York? I don't know. It doesn't really say. It just you go from the desert to the snowy mountains to a destroyed city. Those are the three sets of levels you get. If you want anything more, fuck you. You don't get those. You know, we live in a society, and society says no. Oh, everything's also like really bombed out. Everything's destroyed. So the idea of what I'm going for, the, the background lore, is there's a place called Australis. There was a war between the Westian Free State and the Eastian Republic, where the Westian Free State broke free. The Eastians did not like that. There was a war. Chemical weapons were used. Everyone didn't. Everyone died. However, so both of them have kind of given up on the center of the center of this landmass they call home. That is Badlands. It sucks out there. It is nightmarish and awful. However, they still hate each other and they still fight. Problem is, they have to do it via proxy now, which comes in their old soldiers becoming gang gang guys and they're running drugs, running nightmares, and fighting each other over scraps of territory. It's pretty much gangland, USA. Actually, what you're the USA, gangland, Australis. Which is bad. And people are dying. Actually, I should put... Uh, cyber drugs, guns, and cybernetic enhancements. Yeah, it has this weird cyberpunky vibe to it because you get things like Sigma. Sigma is like one of the biker gangs that is like, yeah, no, we're all tech freaks who do tech freak things, and uh, we we fought in the war. Ha ha ha! Look, we're evil. Uh, and then you kill them. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's open up the system I will technically be using. Welcome to the F0 RPG. Now, the F0 RPG is not technically a real game. So let me actually so Uh, so we want to do viral games, uh, F0. Uh, viral games, tabletop. <laughs> Nothing. Now, one of the odd things is what you where you can find this game, weirdly enough, where you can find it, is on we go 
to one need fortune. Da, 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 da. Just find the right RPG. God damn it. I have zero. There we go. That's zero RPG. But you can actually find it here on 1D4chan. Which gives me the idea that this probably was a... Uh, you know, 4chan project at one point. TG project at one point. That kind of exploded past its own size. However... Uh, actually, it is. Exactly that. And whoever viral games were... Oh... They are no more. This game actually hasn't been touched. This page in general hasn't been touched until last time it was touched is in 2015. It's been almost six years since it's even been looked at. And if we look at the F Zero RPG, uh, da, 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 da. damn it! If we look at the F Zero RPG, you can see version two. Oh boy, someone came in and decided they wanted to do things. No, unfortunately. It's about a homebrew that has been abandoned by its creator. There are parts of this game that just don't happen, and they are gone. However, there are some good ideas in here. There's some interesting concepts and things that I want to use it's the best i can do to honor this game and this game last time we even saw anything here this was 24th of june 2020 so it's only been about a year however it's been nothing nothing really and that's just editing the wiki page so but none of this is here and maybe this is the second edition and that's the game we have however yeah, it's its own thing. It's its own little unique part of the TG history in its own way. However, we're going to be ruthlessly stealing shit from it uh, because I have no honor. Uh, most importantly, we're going to be using this section right here, the ABCDE rating system. Now, what does this actually mean? So... If we go Hello Australis, we want to do it. Oof, actually give me one second.
Okay. Sorry about that. Oh. Hello, Ms. Mizolkar, Mizolkar, I'm gonna butcher your name, mate. Uh, yeah, thank you for following. We're going over an, an F Zero game. That's not an F Zero game. So, uh, well, da, da, da. there you go. Welcome aboard. Sorry, your introduction to me was me in a blank screen having to run away because. Dinner. Long live autism, I can give you that much. Wait a second. Do I know you? I think I do. But as I was before, I had to uh, ungraciously leave. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, welcome aboard to uh, the wonderful world of autism and game design. Uh, I was just going over, actually, the F-Zero role-playing game. It's actually a really well-made game and a really pretty game. But the main system that the F-Zero game uses is called the ABCDE system which is a very complex name, as you can tell. But the entire idea behind it is that every single one of your attributes is rated from A to E, with A being D12 and E being D4. That's it. Congratulations. We've made a character. And you have to pretty much select a attribute a sub alignment, which is AABCE, ABBE, ACCC, BBCC, which... Can we even say BBCC in Twitch? <laughs> or AADD, ABCD, all of these different options. And you have to assign that to your four attributes. Aim, nerve, brain, flare. That's pretty much it. One thing I'm not a huge fan of is this. Like, oh, hey, your aim has to be minimum to, you know, minimum be this to play the game. Not a huge fan of that, but we can improvise with that. And the entire idea is, well, this. Each attribute has four key skills. Attribute rating is rolled whenever the skill is attempted. Any modifiers are simply added. That's it. Uh, you may assign three plus one modifiers. So we are going to be doing employing a system like that. Uh, ABCDE rating system. How do we want to do the attributes? Well, let's see. We want to do. We need a body attribute. We're going to need probably like a pseudo charisma. Hmm. So let's see. We're going to need a body attribute for pretty much physical stuff. A charisma like attribute for talky stuff. Intelligence. Thinky stuff. And the last one they have. What is the last one they actually have? It is. Nope. Nerve. Now, nerve is mostly used to. That's what someone like tries to side ram you or something like that. It's kind of much like your willpower. We don't really need a willpower attribute in this game because the entire idea is to avoid getting brained. So if we employ maybe a speed stat, well, that could work. So we do something. Well, we could use the simpletons. Muscle, looks, brains, and speed, and LBS, bulbs. Probably come up with something a little bit more exciting. It could probably come up with a different name, but we've used these key ideas, and we use the idea of 
Muscles for physical stuff. Me hit you with stick to brain you. That is what we roll muscle for. Looks. What are we rolling looks for? We're looking looks for charisma stuff. I need to convince you to give me better drugs. So what are you going to do? Roll looks. Brains. Thinky stuff. I need to fix something. I need to interact with something. I need to do something that involves my hands and thinking. Brains. Speed. Actually, we can probably call this something like coordination, maybe? We can use that for guns. Because that's going to be a part of this game. Because you have to learn how to shoot. You have to learn how to beat someone's head in. Shoot them. Yeah, actually, so like a coordination stat. Yeah, we can make this work. And we tie all of these two in A, B, C, D, or E ranking, and that's what you have to roll. I'm going to roll a D12, I'm going to roll a D4, I'm going to roll a D6, yada, yada, yada. And we also have skills. We're going to want skills to be pretty limited. So if we're employing limited skills, maybe two skills per? No, 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 no. And see it. Okay, well, let's go into the idea. Let's think about it like this. I am a biker gang guy. I am a biker man gang dude doing biker gang dude things. What am I going to have to know? In the S Zero game, what of our skills? What is our skills? Don't care, don't care, don't care, don't care. So we have Blair is okay, so if we go under the idea that muscle stuff. Let's see, it would be melee attacking, endurance. If we go under the idea that everything has to be used in both on and off, well, we can make that an idea. On skills, off skills. So on bike skills, off bike skills. Maybe like a hybrid skill for each. So you're going to have three each. So strength would be grappling, melee weapons, and athletics. So grappling would be hybrid, melee weapons would be hybrid, athletics would be off, off bike. I'm gonna grab you by the hel grab you by the helmet, slam your head into you, into the by into your handlebars, and cause you to go ass over tea kettle. I'm going to hit you over the head with this stick and kill try to kill you. All right. So if we then go to so looks, if we use looks, we can do talking, off bike, intimidation. Hybrid. Let me do something like coordinate. Something like, kind of like that, or with the idea being that someone high in coordination, someone trying to coordinate on the fight would be less like, all right. I'm going to be doing this, you're going to be doing this, we're going to slam it to the guy at once, so it's kind of like working with your team a little bit more. 
I guess. That's intimidation being like, I'm gonna like go up there like, oh, it's obviously him. He's gonna beat my skull in and make fun of me and break my bike and steal my face. Um, Courtney, I'm not too, I'm not 100% on Courtney yet, but we'll make it work. Uh, bronze, brains, 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 brains. Going off this convenient book, we have things like mechanics, hybrid, larceny. Yeah, this is definitely a TG game. Uh, maybe we take off the looks, the charisma one, and then we put everything here. What do we replace the charisma one with? Because we need to replace it with something. Because a three stat one would work. That'd be too light. Unless we do so, like mechanics, larceny, Knowledge. Actually, what we can do is, uh, oh, I know, streets. And then our final one would be, so streets, the idea behind streets would be being able to make calls on things, being like, yeah, okay, I know there's a shortcut here, or I know this, I know that. Kind of your indirect knowledge because every character isn't exactly going to be the smartest person alive because you're a bunch of fucking gangland assholes all right and then our coordination one would be guns piloting Do something like that. Not 100% on this yet, but. Yeah, we'll do it. It's giving us something getting us something here and that's really all we can ask for so if we go under here the idea being that's the riders are inherently fragile due to the nature of the conflict A few safety mechanics. Place group resource, maybe? If we tie it together as a group resource, what we can do is pretty much like the more things you do, the more likelihood that you're able to manipulate the situation. Because riders are inherently fragile, and they can die very easily, we need a system to allow people to make characters quickly, so, be, so to get right back in the fight. But since they need to get into the fight is qu very quickly, characters can't be too complex, because if characters are too complex and take too long to make, it doesn't matter. That means also bikes can get passed around a little bit more easily and spare parts, so... That would not be a terrible idea. Spare part idea. Spare parts. Well, what I could do... Uh, 
added on, so half the... So almost half the reward. Okay, so half the reward of actually going into a fight, going into a mission, and killing someone is you'll be able to scrap their bike. You're going to get random a little bit of scrap metal that isn't worth anything, but you can also extract parts from them to add it onto your own bike, but only every bike can only put pretty much a part in one specific place. So it's the idea of, okay, I know this Reaper boss has cool handlebars, so after the fight, we can salvage one thing from him. I want those handlebars, because I'm going to replace my own with them. It gives me an advantage to allow you to build your bike the way you want of these mismet, this mangled together set of parts all while maintaining it slowly. Yeah, that could actually work. Spare parts, wear and tear system. So parts that can be added on. So we want the idea of, like, I am taking this someone, I am going into a fight with someone for the deliberate point of, I want to steal your bike and use it for my own and cannibalize its parts. Or, hey, we're not racing because we're, like, we want to do something. No, it's, we're racing to, like, win a part or win something or get something out of someone else. It's entirely likely and almost encouraged that, you know, it's, how do you word this? You're almost encouraged at that point to keep, you know, keep fighting up the chain of command a little bit and keep trying to steal people's parts and steal and build your own bike up while kind of selling off the scrap metal, which scrap could probably use as an inadvertent currency. That could work, kind of a universal currency. Outside the Westian. The idea that Astralis pretty much has its own different currencies between the Eastians and the Westians. So money kind of has different value out there. So if you're further east, Eastian dollars are going to mean more than Westian dollars and vice versa. But Westian dollars are inherently less valuable than Eastian ones. So it's kind of like who has more value based entirely off the fact of where you are. But you can always sell scrap. Which does bring me to note. Uh, which I'm just going to call drugs, 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 more drugs. Because we are in the unfun place uh, post-apocalypse where everyone is higher than a kite. Uh, gee. Players are inherently fragile. That means we actually probably want something like... Armor is simple. Helmet is important. Because if you have a helmet, that means you can... Actually, 
double-bladed slash blunt weapons. Which does mean... Hello, phone. But yeah, now you're kind of seeing the... One of the hardest parts when it comes to writing a game like this. Writing a racing game in general. Is you always have to ask yourself, what do I roll to do something? What do I roll to pass someone? What do I roll to sideswipe them? Now, in the F-Zero game... They assume everything is a skill, because that's all you're going to be doing the majority of the time. You're going to be racing, you're going to be doing that. However, in this game, there's going to be a little bit on, a little bit off. The idea, because you're on bikes, we really don't have to worry about that idea. So we can probably do something like raw speed. If we go under the idea of just speed, speed demons are obviously going to be... You're going to be... Everyone's going to be encouraged to be a speed demon. However, that also puts someone behind you. And if someone is behind you, they have, an, they have a slight advantage in some cases. And it also means your crashes or your accidents are going to be worse. So if we go under that idea... <clears throat> Piloting check. Hmm. I'm trying to imagine myself doing this. I'm trying to put myself in this headspace. I'm going 300 miles down the road. Or more accurately, I'm going 186 miles per hour down the road. Speed is essential. Any one little miss hit, one little mistake. I, my ass is going about 150 miles the other direction with no bike and my face is going to face plant on the asphalt. However... So I'm weaving in and out of traffic. There are others people there's others around me. We're all competing for this singular goal. Trying to get to the end. There's a corner. What do I do? I, I can try to I'm gonna have to break and try to skid along it. So there'd have to be a breaking. Because you're having to deal so much with momentum. This is one of the hardest parts when it comes to this. Is games usually do not handle concept of momentum well. Because momentum is such a simple concept, but it's very difficult to emulate. Because if I'm moving fast, if I'm moving so fast that... Yeah, I, I can't really use five foot squares for everything. Because if I use five foot squares, I've passed a five foot square before I've even thought of something. I'm going 186 miles an hour, 300 kilometers an hour. I am going so fast that means nothing. This is in fact I get fucking boost. But why do you boost in Road Redemption? Why do you boost in any of those games? You boost to get ahead. You boost ahead real fast, and you try to secure a small victory. If I am a person who does bike things, who does bike things for bike reasons, the difficult part would come in. 
God. What are those bikes called? Speed bikes. Uh. Maybe super bikes. Not motocross. Don't care, don't care, don't care. Why are you showing me ads? So here we go, race one. Oh no, Superbike is underway. Cameron Bobier, the number one place with a good launch off the start. And here goes that long drag race in turn number one. Here we go, Cameron Bobier, a guy that does not want to see his name in turn one. He's going to do just that. He's already going to slot himself into turn one as he tries to enter turn one. And that's a little body spot right there for him. Looks like Connor Wyman got an unbelievable start from the third row where he turned to the fifth place right before the match. And Joel. Going in the idea of super biking, that means the idea is that you are going so quickly that you almost need to go. <laughs> I'm going to watch a lot of super bikes. I'm going to have to watch a lot of racing to get this across right. But if we use that idea, we're going under that concept of going that fast, of going that dangerous. We're going to have to go to breaking and boosting. Okay. You know, you're going to passing through a section, but must declare you're doing so for initial piloting role. Uh, plus one. Okay. So it comes down to a risk reward situation. Risk versus reward. Do I deaccelerate? To so the idea is: Do I deaccelerate to get an advantage on the roll, or do I ex or do I shotgun it? And try and get past it quickly. Potentially losing the advantage. Because you're going so quickly. Alright. Okay.
here's what we can do. If we're using the idea is that every single th action you commit in this game is going to be a risk and reward. Let's do that. Let's put that as a note real fast. And those are the main two parts. It's risk and reward on the obstacles. However, in the F0... The F0 game assumes those are your major things that you have to worry about. You are... competing and you are... Uh, you know, going back and forth and you are trying to get ahead of your opponent a little bit. You're trying to... You know, every single step you make is important because it's a race. Road Redemption, the idea isn't really much of that, it's to sometimes kill your opponent. What we can do with that idea is... Uh, each set. So each section track... Goes to three spaces... of oh, three spaces. Top, middle, last. Every time someone enters that phase of the track, it, you're at the top, middle, or last. We'll call it, actually, we'll call it top, middle. Top, middle, and tail. Anyone in any section can fight one another. Can fight one another in melee. But only two people can, quote, lock on a single target. Pretty much that's you coming directly right next to each other and you're now locked. You're kind of dueling one another. You're countering, hitting, you're hitting them. You're countering their hits. Unless we break down the sections further. That could work. But only two people can lock onto a single target. Uh, guns can fire at anyone in any section. Anyone in any section, but firing behind incurs a big penalty to both shooting and piloting. So the idea is that the guys in the back are going to have the most powerful weapon at their disposal. They're going to have a gun compared to everyone else's twatting sticks. However, there's going to be a lot of problems in between you and them, so you kind of have to take out the people. You need to get a clear shot. You gotta take out everyone in front of you before you can really hit the guy in front. So that's kind of the advantage, disadvantage. But the guy in front can't, is gonna have difficulty turning back and shooting you. Because he's no longer paying attention to the front of the road. He's also going too fast that he can't really shoot that well. But he is, at, he is at a universal problem. This is bad for him because he crashes and uh, crashes. Unless we do the idea that break down the section so you have okay let's say each leg a track is composed of legs is composed of legs and spaces each leg has a number of spaces Has a number of spaces where people can actually do spaces. Top, middle, and tail. Everyone at the top is going to be fighting. Everyone in the middle is going to be kind of fighting. Everyone. In... That's going to be your time to really try to zoom ahead. Because you can try to boost out and you're going to shotgun forward and try to move into the next section just as much as 
the people in the bottom sec the people in the bottom section are going to want to shotgun forward people in the top section can break to go back one space so it's the idea of manipulating where you are in the space and seeing who you can actually fight and where you want to fight so if you have if you're a gun guy you don't really want to be in first but being in first is also useful uh, what do you do if you actually so Actually, we can do boosting, boosting far ahead. You can't be targeted. Uh, but you're also out of options. Pretty much, you're not hitting anyone, and anyone, no one's hitting you. But so, if you're, you know, kind of speed demons want to go up first, they want to get out of the that leg of the race immediately, because you don't want to get caught in the fight. You want to be ahead. People who want to fight want to kind of protect their allies up front, because the guys they're not going to be able to last that long because you only have a limited number of boosts. And how do you gain boost? You're going to gain boost by hurting people. Maybe make that a meta currency. Actually, when it comes to neck and neck races. Speed either has the highest speed value or boosts. Well, has a boost. Well, win. Okay, so you're always okay. So you're in a difficult situation, playing into that risk reward idea. Do you shotgun ahead? Try uh, burn all your initial boost and just try to get as far as ahead as everyone as possible, and try to win the race that way. Or do you try to stay in there and build your boost? You would use it. So actually, so let's do fighting's build boost. Need boost to pass other riders or break fight them if we really want to go into that we can use the idea that uh to engage in a fight in a fight you can't boost or break that is what you're doing if your if your action is i'm going to boost I'm going to boost forward. That is my action, and that is what I'm going to do. I am now in first place. I get to decide what happens next. I am in second place. I'm the second person. Da da da. Going net back down. However, if you say, "Okay, I'm going to break," you can't go into a fight. However, someone in that section who is behind you can say, "Oh, you boosted ahead of me. I'm going to shoot you now." Or, "Hey." We're in the same, oh, you, you break to, you know, make sure you don't fucking crash. Uh, you, you know, you break so you don't, so you don't crash. Now you're in here with me. I'm going to grab you by the helmet and power slam you into your bike to kill you. So, actually, what we can do with that, I guess, give me an idea. Uh, top space, top space, hard check. Mid space, mid check. Last space, easy check. So, that's the idea. It's, if you're far ahead, the checks are going to be real hard. But if, uh, if because there's just shit coming in, you're, you know, you're worrying about what's behind you, you're going really fast ahead of you, you can't really get a good idea of what's going on. Everything is that's happening your first time you're seeing it. However, you are ahead. However, if you're far behind, checks are really easy. They're 
piss easy because you, know, you see everything going on. You can understand what's you're not really worrying about what's in front of you, but you're wor you're not worrying about what's behind you. You're worrying about kind of what's in front of you, and even that's not really going to freak you out that much because you can see it. They're not attacking you, so maybe. Dress instead of health. So it kind of determines where you are in the leg of the race and how difficult the check is going, the piling check is going to be. However, if you are far behind, so but we can do this far behind, you know, checks really hard, but make the roll early. What the fuck? No, I don't. I don't want this. Silence. Da 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 da. This is your background music now. There. Uh, where was I? So actually, but you make the roll early. And that also means if there's a point, and that means when you're designing the track section, all right. And that also means when you're making the track sections, you can put in points that only have a certain number of uses. So if you have only a certain number of uses on a certain item, or a certain object in there, like, oh, well, I'm, I'm dead last, I can't use that. I didn't even have the chance to use it, because it's gone by the time I get there. So being in dead last has its appeals in certain cases, but it also is a problem in others. So that's where the racing comes in. However, not every, you can win a race in last place. How do you, may ask? You kill your opponents. You drive up to them, you grab them, and you beat them to death. It's you look at your opponent and you shoot him, or you grab, you know, you slash your opponent to death. <laughs> Congratulations, you've officially won the race. You are the last person alive. <laughs> so that might not be a terrible idea. So it's kind of this back and forth. So you need to learn how to, when to boost. Since you're learning how to boost, you gotta kind of understand. So you have the universal meta currency of me need boost, but you also need to fight to get your boost back. But you're also trying to survive the checks to make sure that you're fighting, which does technically lead to a situation that would also make team play pretty easy. So, one of the other issues I was having is about the idea of team play. However, if we use the idea of, um, actually, God, what is it? It's, uh, team bicycle racing. Cycling team. What's the, what is... A roller, a roller and a sprinter. So that's your idea. Right here. You're building a team based on these concepts because you're going to get some, you're going to get someone who's, let's say, call it like a brute. 
the entire purpose of this of this character is to bully the enemy, protect the sprinter. The sprinter, on the other hand, conserve boost. Serve boost win race. While all of your others are trying to you know, support those two doing those things. So let's say I'm going to start a new game and our guys, we have two brutes and the, you know, and our sprinter. The sprinter's entire idea, he may not be doing too high. He may be in the last space the entire time, but he needs to be protected. What you could also do is employ the idea of slipstreaming so you can have effectively an entire different archetype of just being slipstreamer kind of uh build build boost support others so you have your brute going you have your brute going around beating the shit out of people who get too close to your sprinter the sprinter is always going to be kind of following the slipstreamer because the sprinter pretty much just wants to follow them one for one and like right at the end slipstreamer boosts ahead twice slipstream you know the sprinter follows them and breaks away and the sprinter bolts he burns all his uh, you know, boost for the last second and wins the race, which, again, it's like, oh, no, it's our team won. Like, our guy won, but he is part of our team. So we won. Which does work. And that also gives people... Well, what does the sprinter do in a combat situation? The sprinter in a combat situation is probably going to be a guy with a gun or he's going to be a guy with a light weapon. He's going to be running support then. Because what he can do is he can get into fights and help someone out who needs it. The Brute's in a fight. He ain't going to win that fight very easily because he's surrounded. A sprinter comes up from the side of the enemy and can twack him a few times. He ain't going to be strong. That's not the point. The point isn't to be strong. The point is to, is to pretty much punish the enemy a little bit. And then quickly slip away by boosting out or breaking out. So it's kind of that in out bully the enemy bully out if you want to go for more hunting they're the ones getting up to this faster cars to you know plant them plant the c4 on it or throw a dynamite stick into it do something everyone has a role everyone has a purpose everyone is doing something on the field going 800 miles an hour okay that works All right, so we've been streaming a little over an hour right now, and I think we have a decent idea of what we're going to be doing. I'm going to uh, formalize this a little bit, make it nice and pretty like, go over some other side bits that I was thinking of just to make sure that it that it works in my head. And just to make sure that if we lose it, it would work. It should work in theory. In theory, it should work. Everything is in place and can function. Can. The option is just if. So, thank you all for watching. Godspeed, good luck. I will be streaming on Friday again. We'll be starting the initial bits of this. Trying to make things work. Uh, from there, we are going to probably... Probably this project's going to be split up into three distinct parts, which is going to be makey characters, makey bikes, how race work, then uh, how build tracks. Like, that is literally going to be it. It's not going to be a very complex, like, very long game, but it's a lot of just take what I have and just refine it down to a fine point so uh thank you all hope you all have a wonderful time and i'll catch you on the flip side